Welcome to These Are The Days Of Glory. This week what I'm saying, I say, recap, revive, relive, replay. Mm. That's what we are doing and it's a revival time. These are the days of glory. You are partaking of things happen. Long time ago, I think it was 2016, when there was fire. fire. When I say fire, I mean fire full of fire and you are going to be blessed today ukulumus bari wami mais bari ayayayayay bishop ingwa ingwa ayu tisha u trainer u coach angazo kuti ngambiza ngitini ukko kama kebiza ama ningi u tisha uya fundis ufundis angisha ma corporate world a fundis also ma business a fundis ama ceo ama executive hey and the man of God is down to earth, down to earth. He has planted many churches and he has started a school, life on this the academy, where he teaches and produces among leaders, the academy, and a business. Oh my God, this man of God. Raza, raza, raza. You are you are a great inspiration in the body of Christ, Bishop Nati And I will love you so much, man of God, for every contribution that you have contributed, even tonight. Yo, on that day, you shook me. And I'm telling you, I'm not the same person that I used to be after you spoke about the wisdom to bring solution, the wisdom to bring change, the wisdom to lead, the wisdom to multiply what God has given you, the wisdom. My God, even when manjinje, I'm intrigued. In right now, I'm feeling some illumination, revelation. Something glorious, something wonderful, something unprecedented is happening right now. Yeah, we need this wisdom. And my message this season and in this new era, my message is obvious. It's wisdom. And we have entered a new era, a era of Solomon. 2021 is going to be the year of a new era. You see, when we're talking about a new era, and it's such a year of a new era, basically wisdom. We understand, Leonto, because we want Sophia. We want this thing so that we can be able to know what God has given us. Because there are so many people who don't know what God has given them. He has given them the gift, the anointing, the power, the grace, and the fruits of the spirit, the money, the fame, the position. And among you, they don't understand what does that mean. How must they use it? They don't know how to manage what God has given them. So I'm just touched. And Bishop Natizondi is going to speak to us and I'm telling you, your life will never be the same again. Let me I challenge you a little bit, Church of God. Church of God, I know when we come to church, we have come to be... We want to be high. Just to be high, high, high. Um, don't I feel no good? High, yeah, boy. Eh, 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 So that's how we're high. So as people is cut so good, so bad, but no good. High, go more, yeah. Then go high and wondering because that's what we need. We need people like uh, Josh. Excuse me. People like Joseph who are going to challenge, who are going to contribute in our government, who are going to help, who are going to bring change. We are people about point us, point to government, point our fundis, point our holy, point our council, point our cosmo business, point our yonkin to Gabanya Bantu. When we are going to be a change, when we are going to bring a solution, when we are going to bring what the, the country need, we need to be the light, we need to be the salt of this earth. I hope you will be changed by this message. It was preached a while ago, maybe 2016 and uh, normal 2015. And I want to tell you something. You, your life, 
you, we need to change this world. Before I die, before I go home to be with Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, I want to do something in this world. Even as I'm using this media, social media, this platform to influence you, to speak to you, to touch your life, it's because I've got something burning within me. I don't want to die. When I, in Sanduk Sindhi, so, there was a poem something burning within me something is in his mind is is like fire in my bones it says i want to die empty if i die i want to die empty if you just single but when i die i want to die empty everything i've got everything kuna injumayelo kuna incwadi kuna ma film la ngaphakathi kwami kuna ma teachings kuna ikole kuna mava kuna ma university ala ngapha kuna into eningi eyigculela kumina ngaphakathi you understand kuna ma building aqulela kumina kuna ma ideas abele aqulela kumina ngaphakathi kuna abantu engizoba mentorisha kuna abantu engizoba coach kuna abantu engizoba uplifter kuna abantu engizoba inspirisha kuna abantu engizoba vuselela it's within you it's burning it's burning like fire it's consuming that's why i'm doing all these things because I want to change you. I want to challenge you. I want us to be better. Bishop Natizon is going to inspire us, revive us, and shake us a bit so that we'll go to another level. Wow! I love this man. I know you're going to be blessed. Wow! <laughs> you know, you know, you know, some people can be so generous and uh, uh, to a point where you don't know where to start. What a powerful church you are. What a powerful church you are. Now, before you sit down, I'm going to greet Gathe. But I shall plan just two people and just tell them you are blessed. God's blessing is upon you. You are a blessed man. My tool of very memes. My back should contain eyes. Wang. Now long, I long and for a coach. You are a blessed man. You are a blessed woman. It's a bus of scan. Kurukulu Sempil and Yak. Hallelujah. Let me hear all the blessed people, the women and women. And, and men who are blessed. If you are a blessed man, just say, I am blessed. God's blessing is upon me. Hallelujah. Now you can touch yourself and say, I am a blessed man. God's blessing is upon me. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. What shall we say? to these things. Thank you. Thank you for, for, for such a, a generous introduction. I really appreciate it. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, ang bingalala ing na guzong kasi gan kung kulay si Kona la, baba makeba. Um, zong king na ng ngko kasi gan kung kulay si Kona la, e kamelin ko suces. Amen. The the leadership of this great 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 church. Please receive my greetings. And uh, all the layers of leaders. You are greeted in Jesus' name. And above all, let me greet all the members of this church. Mzalu Pinda, you are such a powerful church. Bes kuluma lang, kuluma lang posto no mama. Giti, you know, sometimes in the mogiona, you don't realize how great it, it is until somebody who observes it from a distance or outside alerts you. Actually, you are sitting with greatness. You, you are such a vibrant, powerful church. Amen. Amen. You are such a powerful, powerful church. 
I want you to put your hands together for this wonderful team, this great worship team and the band. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. And then again, you put your hands together for the two guys. You know, Oban Gonjabe, what? Aing Batandil, and Batandil. But I dig a cool watching a hamba now, but in Basal Semotu and Gibalo Besho, the Besho. Mabe Catal and Paga Karach and Batangeli choose Basho Namans Albon Kamalengos. And I appreciate uh, the commander in chief is here, Mama Uzondi. <laughs> Please put your hands together. Um, the apostle. The apostle is correct. Um, we are hosting a, a, a powerful, a big conference this week. So she's a commander and she, she makes sure that things happen. That's why, you know, she was delayed a bit. Amen. Bazalan, uh, I'm so blessed. Just by walking in here, in this church, really inspired me. The powerful work that you are doing the wonderful church that you are. Uh, let me just, before I preach, tell you this. It takes great members to make a great church. It, it also takes powerful, committed sons and daughters to make a powerful church. And so what we see here, we know it's because of you. Albon Kamalengos. And so you must keep it up. We must keep it up. May two lumemes, I should contanga isuanga la esngisin. Contanga isuanga la esngisin. Umchel to Tim Fundisi, we must keep it up. Keep up a good work. Amen. Hallelujah. And so you must just keep it up, Bazalwan. We will always appreciate our relationship with you. Amen. I, I, the last time I was here, I really preached. And I preached powerfully. Yeah. Yes. And I know that. And I have a word for you today. I do carry with me a very strong teaching heart and I want to invite you to get ready take notes where you can make sure you learn as much as you can this is an apostolic house this church is an apostolic house with a very strong prophetic grace and you know an apostolic house one of the marks of an apostolic house is that it's the house that builds it's a house that impacts its community. It's a house that has a long-term view. Albon Kamalengos. And that's what I sense in this house. Amen. Because of that, we just have to lay, uh, to build brick by brick, line by line, precept by precept, to make sure Guti learn to kunukulu ayenzala is rooted. Amen, Bazalwan. Hallelujah. Amen. This is also a house of winners. Uh, I want We have one good to Mumchella into I Omchella, Mazza Chell with Moose Umchell Moose Lotta of Want Uxa, my dear Albon Cabalegos. I'm telling you, this is a church, a house of winners. This is a house of winners. I'm telling you the grace that is in this house. I was telling your parents earlier, and I was telling them, one of the things I like about them is that they are very bold. You are, you are raised by a very bold leadership. Albon Kamalengos. Amen, Bazalwan. And the thing 
the thing is this when you are led by strong courageous bold leaders you can't help it but follow it just rubs on you and that's why men and women who are really raised in this house one of the signs you'll see is that they will be marked by boldness amen basalwan this, yeah, that's one of the things you will notice about people who are brought up in this church is that they will not be cowards. Fear is not part of the chemistry of this church. Amen. 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 And so you are a house of winners and pioneers. That's the grace that's in this house. That's what we are declaring over you. Amen. Amen. That's what you are declaring over you. Amen, Basalwan. You may be going through um, some setbacks right now, but you are a winner. In Jesus' name. And I want you to receive it for yourself and say, I am a winner. I am a winner. Amen. Amen. These are some of the signs, and I'm going to talk to you about winners. Because that's the grace that's in this house. And we are building from what God is building through the apostle. The apostles that lead you. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I just want to thank you and give you glory. People will say things about you. You know, pastors will prophesy over your life. Prophets will speak things about you. It has happened to me many times, Apostle, where I'll be in a meeting and God will speak a word about me through someone, either people who are my mentors or people who are just strangers. Of course, saying things, Mesho Izinto, Esesuinlenkos, which my spirit approve. And very powerful things about me. I've, I have a long list of prophetic words over my life. It was so with Jesus. Uchesu, people said many things about him hundreds of years before he was born. Prophet, prophesied about him. Isaiah said things about Jesus. Jeremiah said things about Jesus. Even when Jesus arrived. John the Baptist said something about him. You know, the people who He was talking about Jesus. But how many of you know that everything that was said about Jesus, powerful as it was, the devil did not take it very seriously? Of course, the devil took it serious, but not very seriously. He actually started really taking it even more serious when it was now Jesus saying it about himself. Yeah, that's true. You know, you must notice when people hear things said about you, powerful things, they notice, but when they hear you declaring it over yourself, they start reacting. Others will say you are arrogant. You know, others will but you are you hearing me, Basalan? Why? Because the devil takes you serious when you start believing the word of God about yourself. When you start declaring it over your life. Are you hearing me, Basalan? That's why when I say you are a winner, you must receive it. Amen. But you must start saying it about yourself. Hallelujah. The reason why people like Paul were so powerful, Jesus was also powerful, was because Jesus became the incarnation of the word. The incarnation of the word. In other words, he became the living word. The word became flesh. So when you say, I'm blessed, when you say, I am blessed, when you say, I'm more than a conqueror, when you say, I am a winner, 
When you say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's when the devil takes you serious. Are you hearing me, Basal Nebam? Albon Kabalagosi. Usatana Wakala will react to Muchesa said to Minang Indre and Nepkins on Okpila. I get Kosak Baba and Apate Guam. Wabonu take serious letter. Yalo Muntu. Abachama and Abatin. When Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, He has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. That's when the devil started scheming. Because when you start declaring something about yourself, you are on your way to becoming the very thing that you declare. Hallelujah! That's why for winners, there's no room for timidity. There's no room for timidity. Hallelujah. I'm going to teach you about seven things that you must make sure. You must make sure because you are a part of the house of winners. There are seven things that must never escape your mind. Never escape your mind. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7. And I'm going to read from the Amplified, just one verse. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Get wisdom. For skillful and godly wisdom is the principal thing. With all you have gotten, get understanding or discernment or comprehension or interpretation. Get wisdom. Get wisdom. Basalon, turn in fundis. Basalon, bam, turn in The Bible says, by wisdom a house is built. Anything of value, anything that will outlive you, turn in fundis. It takes more than power to build something of value. Power will open doors. Power will open heavens. Power will break and remove obstacles, but it will not build anything. Amen. Great nations are built through wisdom. In fact, when you study, if you're a student of history, you will know that after World War II, countries like Japan were in ashes. Singapore was in ashes. Germany was in ashes. You know, there were many other countries that had military prowess more than these countries. But for these countries to become first world, it took more than power, more than a gun. It took wisdom. Israel enjoyed peace. When we talk about the glorious days of Israel, you are talking about two kings. Two kings ushered Israel to its glorious days. One of them was David. The other was Solomon. Two things, two kings. When you study their lives, these kings were powerful in war, powerful in battle, but they were the wisest kings that Israel ever had. This thing must grow. Now you change your foot, this thing must work. Hallelujah. You know we are a church of power. We are the church of the supernatural. We are the church of deliverance and healing. We are a church of breakthrough. Because of that, to use the power God has given us will take wisdom. Wise people build. One of the things we are praying for in our nation today is that God will raise young kids who can think. Young men who can think. Young women who can think. No, Kulumani, but we're turning in fundus. 
I can tell you now, you know, God has given me a privilege to travel. Of course, I've not traveled like others, but he has given me a little privilege to travel and see, and I'm a student of leadership. Because I'm a student of leadership, I'm very observant. And one of the things I can tell you now, I can tell you now, the African church is a praying church. In fact, Christianity is growing fast in, in Africa, Latin America, and as well as in Asia. We pray, we heal, but one of the things that I think is lacking that we must do is raise thinkers. Touch yourself like this and say, I must think. God must give me wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the application of knowledge. It's not knowledge. It's the application of knowledge. Ability to apply what you know. Are you hearing me? Because when you know, but you can't, you don't know how to apply what you know. You don't go far. But wisdom also is the ability to apply what television show you must seek more wisdom then in fact you must ask for more wisdom and apply more wisdom then you read your first your friends post on Facebook more wisdom go see Jesus in Luke chapter 2 verse 52 that verse summarizes the life of Jesus in one line after Jesus was born, then the Bible is quiet about Jesus. Then when it comes back, it summarizes his life. This is what Luke says, Dr. Luke says. He says, then Jesus grew in wisdom. Yes. Amen. A church filled with wise people is a powerful church. Because it means what you are taught here, what you learn in your scriptures, what you get through revelation, what you get in prayer, you are able to apply in your daily life. Then you are wise. Hallelujah. Then you are wise. Wisdom is ability to apply what you know. You acquire knowledge, but ability to apply it is wisdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So winners are wise people. Ability to think and act using the knowledge you have and experience you have. I like some, uh, when I read a book some time ago, and this author said, wisdom is ability to apply insight in your daily living insight are you hearing me Basalon? solomon ushered israel to its glorious years during his time the bible tells us it says solomon lived in peace with all his neighbors. And during that time, every man sat under their fig tree. Solomon, Because they were at peace with everybody. This man had ability to deal with problems even before they reached his people. Are you hearing me? This man had ability to resolve problems even before they arrived in Israel. So says the Queen of Sheba. When the Queen of Sheba arrives, he says, Wisdom. Everybody say, I must think. This thing must grow. It means I must have knowledge, but I must have ability to apply what I know. James chapter 4 verse 2 says, it says, 
actually James chapter 1 verse 5. Let me start with verse 5 of chapter 1. If any of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of the giving God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without fault finding and it will be given to him. The next level of this ministry, the next level of your ministry, of your, of your business, your career, is going to demand you to act, speak, walk wisely. Then he says, grant your servant wisdom. It's important to desire spiritual gifts. It's important to desire spiritual office. But I can assure you this. If you carry great anointing without wisdom, the very anointing destroys you. Again, if you carry great skill without wisdom, or great knowledge without wisdom, that very knowledge puffs you up. So says Paul in Corinthians. But I've prayed before I came here. And this is what God has given me as a word for you. He will increase your wisdom. He will enlarge your wisdom. He will enlarge your capacity to make decisions. You will shock yourself on the ability of problems you'll be able to solve. You are wiser than your peers, actually. You are wiser than your friends. In fact, let's speak like the Jewish, you know, the Jewish parents to their children. They will say this, you are even wiser than your teachers. You are wiser than your neighbors, my friend. Because you not only carry natural knowledge, but you also carry spiritual wisdom. My God is here to grant you ability to think beyond you have e beyond what you have ever thought before. Your capacity, the capacity of your mind, God will enlarge it in Jesus' name. He will give you creative ideas, but he will give you ability to execute those ideas. It's called wisdom. We don't want only dreamers. Dreaming is not enough, but we need executors. Ability to execute your dream. Ability to unfold your vision. Ability to build from scratch. Ability to know what to do, when to do, how to do, and how to do. In the name of Jesus. May God raise young girls who are wise. In Jesus' name. May God raise young boys who are wise. But in this season, even old men, God will grant them fresh wisdom. Are you hearing me, Basalan? Are you hearing me, Basalan? Hallelujah. I was teaching in the church, and this is what I told them. I said, the reason why... We need God to accelerate our wisdom. It's because he has called us in such a time as this. And now we find ourselves ministering in our African black communities. Do you know that, you know, studies have been shown that when you compare blacks, black ch children, as a nation we are f five to six decades behind whites. We are decades behind. They own more land than we have. They occupy more senior posts than we do. They are richer than we are. Not because they are cleverer than us. Of course, that's history. We can do nothing about it. But God is not surprised by history. It happened in front of him. He was there when history happened. The same God who was there when history happened must accelerate our wisdom so that we are able to do much more much more for our children it must be five times ten times a hundredfold in the name of jesus if he did it with daniel he can do it with our children he made daniel a ten times wiser than the children of babylon 
My God, I am here, Enanda Gizoti. He is raising young people. He is raising old people. He is raising young girls. He is raising young boys who are ten times wiser, hundred times wiser. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Me, Namazanabam, I want you to speak in tongues, but I need you to do more than just speaking in tongues so that you don't speak in tongues and remain poor. Don't speak in tongues and be the tail, but you must be the head. To be the head, you must be wiser. You must think, you must use this. Hallelujah. Everybody shout and say, I'm a thinker. My mind works, my brains work. I have knowledge, but God has given me ability to apply the knowledge. In Jesus' name, say amen. The reason why, the reason why I'm spending time on this is because, ladies and gentlemen, I mentioned to you last time I was here, the world is run by thinkers. Thinkers run the world. I can tell you now, it's thinkers who run the world. It's not masses. Thinking, thinking and wisdom removes you from masses. Are you hearing me? Has ushered you into a new season. Your mind works. Your, your mind works. You are a thinker. Give God a big hand. You are a thinker. You know, you know, you know, you know, even Joseph. You see, sometimes we focus a lot on his spiritual gifts. Prophetic gift, which is important because he could, he could explain dreams. But ladies and gentlemen, it was not the explaining of dreams that was making him prime minister. It was ability to think. And wisdom. It was wisdom. Because a gift will elevate you. But it's wisdom that will enable you to navigate where the gift has placed you. Amen. 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 He's not wise. The gift has elevated him, but he lacks wisdom to navigate the position where the gift has placed him. When God elevates you, it will take more than just the elevation. It will take your ability to think. Jesus was anointed, but God made sure that he grows in wisdom. He grows in wisdom. Winners are wise people. Allow God to grant you wisdom. Number two. So wisdom must always be at the foremost in your, in your, in your list of things every day. Secondly, is plans. Everybody say plans. Planning. Somebody say, everybody say planning. planning. You know, being a winner in your marriage, in your family, in your job, investment, whatever you do, will not just happen because you love God. And it will not just happen because you're a nice person. Or it won't even happen because God loves you. It will happen because you are a planner. Plan. Life can never be lived effectively without planning. 
shooting Ladies and gentlemen, I can announce to you now. You see, there's an English statement, and I think it's correct saying, which says, failure to plan is planning to fail. How many people do we pray for every Sunday? We anoint them and we pray for them. But because they've got no plan for the dreams and the visions they have, they've got no plans for their life, they don't even sit down and plan. They never reach the place where we prophesy them to. They never reach the place that we prophesy them to and we look like false prophets. How many people have made us look bad? And we look like false prophets. Yeah, we are powerful. We are true prophets. The problem is we are prophesying over disorganized people. See the numbers too. To an a prophet. Last year I did this in church. I taught them in church about planning. I said to them, count your years. And then I said to them, add 20 years into your years. Do that. And see how old you'll be. I'm going to ask you a number of people who are going to be a little bit. That is you. You will be like that in 20 years' time. I want you to ask you a question. That's you. I want you to ask me about that. Are you hearing me, Pastor Nebam? Even prophetic words, even the most spiritual of statements that were uttered in your life, it will take more than the statement, it will take good planning. Families, great families plan. If I ask you, your husband, you are the head of the home, right? The question is this, as the head of a home, where are you taking them to? Because head means leadership. And as far as I know, there are three functions of leadership, three if not four, core functions. The first one is vision casting. The second one is decision making. The third one is problem solving. And the fourth one, the fourth one is inspiration and motivation. So if you are, can't do those four things, you are not the head. And you are not the leader. Abachamenabatelo. <laughs> Go in the Bible, Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. It tells me that even God planned the coming of Jesus. Within the fullness of time, God can send forth his son. Which means there was a time when God said it's still not right. Because it's not part of my plan. It says even your salvation was planned before the foundations of the world. And then it says even the lamb was slain before the foundations of the world. Then the Bible says it declares the end in the beginning. Which means he has a plan already. Even before the beginning unfolds, God already has a plan from start to finish. Are you hearing me, Basala Nebami? Are you hearing me, Basala Nebami? Touch yourself like this and say, Disorder is not my portion. I'm an organized man. Of course, you can't be an organized man if you're a woman. Say, I'm an organized woman. Everybody, one more time, I'm an organized man. Now, let's stand up quickly. One, two, three. And I want you to go to two people and say, my brother, start planning. My sister, start planning. Start planning. Work out your plan. Where are you going to? Sit down. 
Give God a big hand. Now everybody you say, I am rising. And I'm not going down. Now that will depend on your planning. It will depend on your planning. Are you hearing me? I see people who go to school, they even go to university without a plan. And they rabashanda, rabashanda, rabashanda with no plan. You must rabashanda and rabashanda over a plan. When they declare and they bind and lose and declare, I am going up, I'm going up, up where? You must first say where. And that's a plan. There is a plan. As a matter of fact, my wife, oh, she's here. You know, many years ago, in 1993, when I proposed marriage, 94, 93, it was 93, when I proposed marriage, you know, she asked me a question. You know, young as I go, you know, she said, okay, okay. And then she said to me, then what is your vision? She asked me my vision and she asked me my plan. Then when I finished answering, then she said, and then where do I fit in, in that plan? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. unfold every day. Are you hearing me, Plan, 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 plan. Hallelujah. How do you plan? Let me give you a, a tip. This is how you plan. You first ask, ask yourself this question. Where will I be in the next 20 years? Where do I see my life in the next 20 years? Where do I see my family in the next 20 years? Where, what will my career look like? And then the next question is this. That's a long-term question. The next question is this. What about the next five years? Where will I be? It's a medium-term, short-term, and a long-term question. And then the next question is this. What will it take for me to get there? That's how you plan. What will it take for me to get there? When we facilitate strategic planning, we help companies to answer that question. What will it take for me to get there? And then you start listing those things down. That's how you plan. And then the last question is, where do I start? Repeat with me. What did you, what was the first question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first question. The next question. And the third question. And the last question. Where do I start? Now I show you. Where do I start? Hallelujah. But that's very important because, ladies and gentlemen, every day is a gift to you. Every single day is a gift to you. Every day is a gift to you. God is a giver. You know, the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. When you wake up in the morning, that day is a gift to you. You cannot squander a gift. The question is this, how are you going to utilize the gift if you're not, you don't have a plan? No. What is your plan? Proverbs 19 verse 21 says, Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that will prevail. It's the Lord's purpose that will prevail. Psalms 20 verse 4 says, in the living translation, it says, May he grant your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed. When my plan succeed, I got succeed this from nowhere. We don't succeed in the vacuum, but we succeed based on the plans that are there. How
How do you know if you are successful? How do you know that you are succeeding if you have no plan? What's going on? 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 How do you know if you have no plan? Albon Kamalekos. And number three is priorities. We now think about priorities. Priorities. Everybody say priorities. priorities. Think about your priorities. You know, the Bible, when it says in, in Mark 6.33, that's about priority. It's about prioritizing the kingdom. Let me tell you this. Good winners always think about their priorities. Basalon. Basalon. Everything might be important, but not everything is urgent. In life, everything might be important, but not everything. If you don't have priorities in life, every meeting is worth attending. If you have no priorities in life, you go anywhere, everywhere, anytime. Because to you, everything is equal. God did not create life like that. Priority, what are your priorities? What comes first in your life? What follows and what follows? Barcelona, mom, let me tell you this. Actually, kingdom living is about a reprioritized life. New way of setting priorities as a child of God. Barcelona, mom, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. If Vangeli Salto, Laguna Sintesas is Veluisha Snagakola, Kwafigi Vangeli La Shincha am a priority. Yingago, Minangim Gabas Muntu, or to Sam to Anakulukota, my priorities are Casafana. As a fan and say, before a call, the low Muntu has been cherished, but has not really been saved. It's one thing to be cherished, it's another thing to be integrated in the kingdom. Thank you very much. The Shumalang Pegue move, Amaji. The Bangatabangs were about to move. Before. Because if I'm a priority. I'm a priority. It sounds very harsh. Atu yabana mausa, mautu utando gulande la mina, kutu satandu pila wako, you are not fit. It means, goba ushko ndu chesu kutu, you still prioritize yourself more than me. You have not checked on your priorities. Are you hearing me, Basalone Bam? The winners know what is top and what is not top in their priorities. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Ugo yabana nguti, I know. I just know. When a person says, Hey, for this card, it's not all right. Give peace. What is no, I just know I'm not a priority. Because anything you value, you make time for. Are you hearing me, Basalon? Everything you value, you make time for. But anything you don't value, you go to it when you find time. you cannot make time for you don't value you are fooling us most you good you value it you don't it's like a man who's married but he's got no time for his wife uti amatenda uko nendu kustel uti priority yake imali more than ukoskas that's all san e tan amen are you hearing me, Basalwan? 
Work out on your priorities. Let first things be first. First things must be first. The other thing that winners must think about is money. Everybody say money. Everybody say money. When it comes to money, let me tell you this. It's only losers who don't see value in money. It's because they want to turn the church into losers. Because they know it will take money to occupy this building. They know it will take money to keep these lights on. They know it will take money to have this microphone. They know it will take money to have these speakers. They know it will take money to have these screens there. And they know if you don't talk about money, there will be no money to have these screens there. And then they will see the church as a losing entity. About Are you hearing me? So don't be fooled to tell about it's the devil who wants to make us losers. We are not losers, my friend. Our father owns a cattle on a thousand hill. Silver and gold belongs to him. Silver and gold belongs to him. Jesus became poor so that we will be rich. And so we will talk about money. So we will talk about money. That's not a problem. We'll talk about money until our people have got money. We will talk about money until our people are out of poverty. We will talk about money until our people can stay where they want to stay, drive what they want to drive, eat what they want to eat, wear what they want to wear, do what they want to do. We will talk about money. About Samuel Abachakin. Because America runs the world because they've got money. China is now running the world because they've got money. Because when you've got money, you've got no voice. You have no voice when you have no money. About something about that thing. Now touch yourself and say, I will think about money. And I will make money. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. They want to laugh at us as pastors and say, You are shepherds of poor people. They want us to they want to make us shepherds of poor people. That's not why what you are here for. We are here to empower poor people so that they come out of poverty. About time and about taking. My mentor taught me. My mentor taught me. He said, uh, Dr. Gagana taught me and says, and he said, poverty scandalizes you. He, poverty makes you a permanent scandal. Because you know what? Because when you are poor, poor people, even people. You know, once you are, when poverty has scandalized you, no one wants to be next to you. Everybody's embarrassed with having you next to them. That's why we must kick poverty out of the door, out of our townships, out of our city, out of our country, out of Africa. About time and about children. Me now, I was preaching in Germany, in Fundis. I was preaching in Germany. And God gave me an opportunity to see. These churches, these brothers, they lead churches that are not even a quarter of a church that I lead. But they can finance missions. They can send missions to all over the world. They own their church buildings. These people can send pastors everywhere to preach. They can pay for anything with 50 people. And then, they want, then we run churches with 1,000 people. But we can't even send one missionary. Where is the problem? It's not the Holy Spirit. It's not tongues. It's not gifts. It's not deliverance. It's money. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, that's the reason why, of course, things like HIV and AIDS, of course, these are sicknesses that are transmitted in certain ways. But the truth of the matter, there is, there's a reason why it's rampant on Sadek. It's because Sadek is poor. Yeah. Because poverty scandalizes you. It makes you vulnerable. You can't even eat a balanced meal. 
I mean, when people are poor, my wife is a nutritionist. When people are poor, you give a lecture on eating healthy. And he's sitting down there, he's thinking, Oh, nanga kuluma ngo pitrut nga utata pinje, mkosi ya mali inu pitrut. Nanga kuluma ngo pis nga utata pinje, mkosi ya mali inu wamina, gili uputu na mazambane kwa nene. You see, it scandalizes you. Abacha amena batetlin. In other words, young people, are there any young people say, yes, say amen, fundis? Do we have young people here? I want you, every young person, to stand. Now say this after me. Say this after me and say, I will never be poor. My life will never be poor. Poverty is not my portion. I will live where I want to live. I will eat what I want to eat. I will wear what I want to wear. In Jesus' name. Give God a big hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want the whole church to rise. Rise, 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 rise. Rise, 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 rise. And say, I will never be poor. I will work hard for what I, I own. I'll work hard for what I earn. Poverty will never be my portion. My children will never be poor. My family will never be poor. My children's children will never be poor. I will eat what I want to eat. I'll wear what I want to wear. I'll drive what I want to drive. I'll go where I want to go. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Now, now I want you to turn to two people. Turn to two people and say to them, you will never be poor. And this other one, you'll never be poor. You will eat what you want to eat. And live where you want to live. Drive what you want to drive. Wear what you want to wear. In Jesus' name. Hey, hey, hey. Somebody. Somebody scream. Yes. Yes. Think about money. Basalon. Basalon about turning from this. It's the love of money that is the root of evil. It's not thinking about money. About amen about it. There are four things you must think about when you think about money. One is how you'll earn it. Two is how you'll save it. Three is how you'll uh, one is how you earn it. Two is how you'll give it. Three is how you'll save it. Four is how you'll invest it. Those are things you must always think about. How can I earn more money? How, how can I earn more money? My wife is right here as my witness. When I need money, I take a decision. I go and make it and come back home. I go and make it. Yes, I still go to corporates and walk in there and, and, and leave an invoice. I still pay them a visit and just leave an invoice when I need money because I've got skills. I've got knowledge. You know? Yes. So you think about how you'll earn it, think about how you'll give it, think about how you'll save it, and think about you how you'll invest it. Spending is automatic. You don't even have to think. This is a church of winners. You have not heard me. I said this is a church of winners. If the guy sitting next to you does not believe it, shout it until he believes it. Say amen until he believes it. This is a church of winners. This is a church of winners. Are you hearing me, Bazalon? Meaning this is a church of people. If you are still next to a poverty line, because you believe and you belong to this church, you are on your way up. You are on your way up. You are on your way up. You are not going down, but you are going up. Are you hearing me, Basalanabam? No, you are not going down, you are going up. Hallelujah.
If you are next to a poverty line, you are going up because of being part of this church. And believing this word. Think about money. And lastly, time. Winners think about time. Everybody say time. time. Psalms 90 verse 12 says, teach us wisely all the time we have. It says, teach us to number our days. Ephesians chapter 5 verse, verse 16 says, making the very most of the time or buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. Ladies and gentlemen, there's one thing, there are many things I don't know. I can tell you now. There's, there are many things I don't know. But there's something that I know very well. I can give you a million if, you, if I get it wrong. Let me tell you this. This is what I can guarantee every one of you. You know, if you are sitting here today, what's the day today? Yeah? 5 December 2016. And the time is 25 past 9, right? Let me guarantee you this. At exactly 5 December 20, 2017, at 20 past 9, you will be one year older than you are now. I guess I get a funny man. Exactly, you'll be one year older. If you are 20, you'll be 21 next year. By this time. When we meet, by this time, we'll be exactly 21. If you are 40, you'll be 41. Gishunga Pampisoka, 40 year old. Gishunga declare it in Jesus' name, I'm 40 years, I'm 40 years, I'm 40 years, I'm 40 years. You will know that you are 41. Why? Because time waits for no man. If you don't use it wisely, if you don't buy time, if you don't use time wisely, you begin to lose. There's no time to waste because you are getting older. I am getting older. You know, there was a time, Makeba, when I used to drive with my daughter, uh, she likes playing with my head. So she would play with my head and then she would say to me, Hey, Baba. There's one. I don't know what to say. No, there's two. I don't know what to say. I don't know to I'm getting older. That's why I quit playing a long time ago. I quit playing a long time. I'm very serious with life. If you are still playing with your life, by the time you want it back, it will be gone. No amount of prayer will bring back the, the clock. Amen. 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 Use time wisely. Use. Let me tell you this. If the degree is three years, decide to spend three years. You can't spend six years on a three-year degree. <laughs> Use time You can't. Are you hearing me, Bazalon? Decide. Just decide, Guti. I'm time-specific. Put deadlines. Put deadlines. Kufano kuse konzwenji. Kufano kuse konzwenji. Kufano kuse konzwenji. God works through time even though he is not confined to time but he chooses to use time Galatians 4 verse 4, God sent Jesus on time. Do you know there are opportunities once they are gone, they are gone? Okay, we'll lose weight too, but we'll be able to get the bambi and the bambi. 
Usabatewe ya tada za libu yise nkosi. Iu uteo zobu yisi nsuge za atli wa eskonyana. Au bota eskonyana saata atakpelile. Some things, some things in life are time specific. It's like, ugobona, ugobona bata batala, bata batala, bata batala. Ingondo ikati, ingondo, ingondo ya kotisan. Ingondo ya kotisan. Bayaza bata batala, isalwaz. Masa tinu ngapele, wolo koko masa tinu ngapele. E se tu, where, where si po? Gizoku, gizoku, ebo abinde, gati ngapele, gizoku, gizoku bokoz. Utu ambalo si pusi pamoja kwa mbele, umuto pilda ebo. Utu mabu gusi pumbo tuwe ukoko la. Ingondi amkosi, sabon. Imchelu utu se na le amal, na tuakti le sababu shayo si po. Kati kape la kape la manju si po menga vela je koko. Angale ngu koko lenge la. Those of us used to play football, it happened to me. Those of us used to play football, ingon digi chel tu sal usal usal tinti pon. Aji ingon diak tinu tint. Katum zimbu swa bende skat. Balpa asaba fan lise. Kesi kati zui ati sai tu tigeze jad. Kiti shanga kick ki bicycle no magleze jad lise jad. Lord Malfi udut. Force of gravity pulls you quicker. Then it pulled the young boy. And then you are down. What's the problem? Time has had its effect on you. Time has had its effect on you. There are things that you must do whilst you are still young. And you must do them well. There are things that you must do now. And you must do them well. Because once this time goes, when you try it later, it's like visiting an old man who's bitter. Bongo wa shalom to Peter. Isa wa zesh Peter. Yabon si kala uzo ham. Si tijenga mosis katsam. Kamosi tuba la mugu benga zama. Tina kasi ngakzen kos. Tina taba fundis askonde me mundo. Si fa ya si koko kulu kulu ya zwenzan. Kulega koko kulu kulu. Kongke kizat lenzen kos. Kau tu ya, zat depan kau tu gak sabu ya. Bawa tu tu zat dan sekos. Amgela je si mau pegang dengan asoma, you know. Iskati sambil. Amgela je kau si kulu kulu wayas. Ya bawa in 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 in. Ubo antara ikol oleh tu don't tell ni face. Sudu kau tak kong kek sebesar aku boleh guru saya kau kau. Kau abam tandai, ya bawa. Kau abam tandai. Nalo aku kau kau guru next eh. Ya bawa. Wah, the the iskati sajula. This is a time. Are you hearing me, Barcelon? If you want a master's degree, go and catch it now. If you want a PhD, go and catch it now. If you want a business, start it now. Register it now. Get it done now. If you want a promotion, prepare yourself now. Stop wasting your time. Stop wasting your time. Are you hearing me, Barcelon? Are you hearing me? Otherwise, you'll be a bitter old man. You'll be a bitter old man. I used to tell to tell, I used to talk to some of my friends and my colleagues. No, you had your own time when you were young. You can correct and correct, but seriously. Jesus was young. All his disciples were young. Do you know that Jesus called the 22, 20, they say John was between either 22 to 24, he called him an apostle. <laughs> so he had no limitation. Jesus, really, he wants you to use your time wisely. In fact, I, mean, I strongly believe, let me declare this. There are people that God is raising in this church. You are going to do far more than what your parents did in their lifetime. That's what's going to happen. I believe in a church that I lead, there are young people who are going to do not double, not even triple what I've done. Far more. Are you hearing me? Because they receive young as they are, what I did not receive when I was young. 
When we were young, you know, these messages were not there. Nobody taught us about prosperity. You know, what I've seen in this church, when I, what I've seen in this church, I'm hearing, I'm seeing it now when I'm this old. And there are kids who are receiving it when they are 13 years old, 12 years, and they are bound to do far more than what this apostle, this apostle, that apostle will ever do in their lifetime. Because they receive what we did not receive when we are young. Are you hearing me, Bazalwan? We did not have churches which are so vibrant, full of grace, anointing, and power like this church. About yeah. and about And then there are people who are wasting time in the presence of such greatness, the presence of such great anointing, the presence of such great visionaries. They are wasting time. They are wasting time. I mean, with us, even we are there. You ask what the team. No man about you, but the leg nigga powerful. I'm a bull, Uban, Lulula, Lula. You couldn't do anything powerful. You are black. Nina, the environment in the church is so great. The environment outside suits you. About your man about that thing. There's black economic empowerment, there's employment equity, there's skills development. You can do much more than what we have done. Are you hearing me, Barcelona? Time. Everybody say time. Everybody say time. No, Tintu Makalon, Makalon, don't waste time. Otherwise, you'll regret. Don't waste time. Otherwise, you'll regret. Now let me rebuke in Jesus' name the spirit of procrastination. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. These people who are saying, I'll start next year, I'll start next year, I'll start next year, I'll start next year, in Jesus' name, I kick that spirit from hell out of you. You've been talking about great things for too long. You have never started a single thing. Are you hearing me? How many times have you been talking about that vision? You start, what can you say, ichi, ichi? You have not even started it. In the name of Jesus, this church will be celebrating new visions, new dreams, new invention, new ideas, fresh ideas. There will be men and women who will come and report they've started new businesses. They've invented new products in Jesus' name. In 2017, we will celebrate people who have registered for new courses. Others will register for new diplomas and new degrees. In this church, in this church, in this church, in this church, no more procrastination. In this church, in this church, in this church, in this church, in this church. We will celebrate new marriages in this church. New marriages. Procrastinators must go. Time will, work, will not wait for you. About time and about thirteen. Marry now. About time and about thirteen. Mary, now stop procrastinating. Time is not waiting for you. Are you hearing me, Basarabam? I declare in Jesus' name those who've been shelving your dreams. The spirit of boldness. The spirit of courage in Jesus' name. You will buy time and you will not sell it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, Bazalan. It's not a mistake that God has called us to preach to you as we are black and we're preaching to our own black people. Because whites are way ahead of us. I was teaching other pastors the other day and I was saying to them, I consider myself a late starter. Because I believe most of us are late starters. Most of us blacks are late starters. starters. Why? Because Angisho, Tina, when you are schooling, you are not going to be able to do it. Which is very important. That's what the system did. By the time you are 
o classmate wa ko mlungu seqala le business le sithathu ma ma ekwi ministry is pastoring his third church and with us 50 year olds and 60 year olds are still saying god call me wasathi ngibize inkosi umlungu also sikhathu sethi when am i retiring in ministry so tinamfundi we are raising a generation that is not going to be in areas like we were not in areas like we were we are raising kids who are going to move from high school and receive the call of god and go to college and start powerful ministries are you hearing me bazalwan who are going to graduate from medical school and start building their own hospitals muslims are owning hospitals who are going to graduate from agricultural colleges on the first year they buy their own farm first farm and own it in the name of jesus are you hearing me bazalwan are you hearing me this is going to happen here in this church those people are here some are there some are there others are there others are there in the name of jesus in the name of jesus and i have taken all your time i've taken all your time but i want you to write this down this is the last thing that winners must think about is solving problems you must be a problem solver you must not be a problem causer but be a problem solver now I want you to listen to me now not as a preacher listen to me as in my other life I spent consider considerable time as an employer yes I was an HR executive for some time and I used to do recruitment and this I know for a fact any company when they want managers they want someone to groom to be a manager or a supervisor this is what they will look for they will not look for your qualifications qualifications are important but they will look at your cv this is what i used to do and see this person how much problem solving have they done in their lives yeah how much problem so going to fun muntu zophatha ekuphatha endlala kubokwa nkinga welcome welcome land your ability to solve problems will determine how far you go actually even in the church no man is one of the things you look at but this man elder will he help the church solve problems no Communities need problem solvers. Churches need problem solvers. Let me tell you, problem solvers rise faster in life than people who cause problems. Thank you very much, my sister. That's for you. Winners are problem solvers. Are you hearing me? Do you make problems or do you solve them? Do you cause them or do you solve them? Anybody who's in a managerial position will tell you. Any leader, your pastor may not tell you, but I will tell you because I'm not from here. I'll tell you because I'm helping you. I'm helping you. Let me tell you this. It's free. It's free of charge. And I'm not going to charge you. Nothing is a headache like a person who knocks at your office to tell you of problems and not suggest any solution. Who lead the ministry? Who is the challenge in the ministry? The challenge is to say, Who is the challenge? The challenge is to say, Who is the challenge? The You see, teach yourself to be a problem solver. Do you know that even Jesus coming here was to solve a problem? 
problem. Today we call Nelson Mandela an icon. I always ask myself, if there was no apartheid, would he be an icon? He's an icon because he solved the problem. When he came out of prison, there was deep hatred in terms of racial relations. He made his mind. He said, look, I'm solving a problem by preaching reconciliation. He brought a solution. When you bring solutions, people will celebrate you. People will desire to have you next to them. People will enjoy your presence. If you are a kind of guy who is good at identifying problems, but poor at identifying solutions, nobody will want you next to them. That's why the church, as a matter of fact, the church is part of a problem solving mechanism. Do you know what the church is for the earth? Amanda Ibandalila, M. Sabeluches, what Tanzil Sale, I'm Saben, Robin King Gila, I'm Saben, I can Zuluin. What in Tanzil to back in a bella? Go back for Leba Pegan and Kinga, El Yesono, no moon to Lime Saben. The relevance of a church in the community is in its ability to solve problems. It's not how much it sings, it's not how well it preaches, it's how well it's able to identify problems and bring Christ into problems. Are you hearing me, Mazalwan? In your workplace, do you solve problems? The apostle has prophesied your promotion, but how do you promote a person who can't solve a problem? We've declared you that you are rising, but you're rising, how much will it help the world, or your company, or your organization? Let department of seven Zagion. We can prophesy over you, and we have prophesied. But as long as you don't solve problems, you are not going anywhere. But I declare in Jesus' name, you are wise. Amen. The wisdom of God is upon you. The wisdom of God is upon you. You will be able to create and to bring solutions in complex situations. In Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe <laughs> Albon Cabalecos, Yatili Shy stand. I mean, Angry Ashwat, I hope to Tabapel and Lulag. About Tabel about it. By the way, it does not mean that you'll solve all problems, but you'll ensure that problems are solved. Ensuring does not mean solving. Sometimes you solve, sometimes you ensure. For example, when the pool at home is green, sometimes I go and work at it, sometimes I call the company to go and I'm ensuring. That's what it means to solve problems. Are you hearing me? Yeah. I want everybody to stand, I want to pray for you. Did you learn anything today? Yeah. Did somebody learn anything today? Yeah. Are you hearing me? Is somebody better now yeah. from what you have received in Jesus' name?